Okay, so I've modified this control drawing a little bit to try and illustrate the impact of dead time on a process. What I've added at the bottom right hand side here is a delay time, which is process dead time. So that says that um, the PV will be delayed by 20 seconds. An example would be you have a valve in a piece of pipe that's 30 meters downstream of the measurement and there's water flowing in it and there's 20 seconds of velocity time before the measurement of temperature or flow further upstream. I've added in which was originally actually the time constant of the process of the valve is one second and I put the reset time of the control at one and a half seconds because that's quite reasonable if you've got a fast valve. Now if we tune this loop as we have it and there is dead time and just for the purposes of the um, illustration for now just ignore this section up here this is an addition which we'll talk about just now so i want to show you what's happening when you're running this process at a typical set point it's running in cascade as you can see with a set point of 2000 so if we now go to the trend this is what you would typically see oscillation so this is the output, which is in blue, controller output, and you have this oscillation. Now, the first thing that gets done normally is the user would go in here and detune the loop. So they would make this an order of magnitude maybe higher. And we can leave that, and now you've got a fairly slow process. And there's no guarantee that this can work either. Again, if you have to look at the stability, and you'll understand that dead time, unfortunately, creates this instability. And you would again see this is not going to work. The person would then go back, tune it even more, make it close to the dead time. And then maybe we would start to see an improvement in a feedback loop. But now you've obviously got this feedback loop that is fairly sluggish. So I'm going to let it run for a bit and get to tuning settings that would probably end up being used for normal control if no dead time compensation was, was done. So you have done some tuning to try and make it as stable as possible. What, you, what I've done is I've changed the PV to be shown in green and the output in blue. And you can see, if you look very carefully at the time interval from here to here, it's a reasonable time. That's 23. There we have the change at this time interval. And we're almost, you know, it's, it's, probably uh, one, two, three, three minutes or so rise time. It's because of the, the fact that we don't want to overshoot and we don't want this oscillation. If one looks at the tuning settings that were eventually selected, I had to reduce the gain and otherwise get become this oscillatory and increase the reset time. This is quite common in a typical process which has dead time, as I said before. Another place where I've seen dead time, where the rise time of the process is quite quick, but there's the dead time is significant relative to the rise time, is on, say, an oxygen evaporator. If you put steam into the evaporator, there is some dead time, which is, say, five, five to ten seconds, and then when the vapor comes out, uh, the impact on the gas pressure control is quite significant. So you've got quite a, a, a significant dead time relative to, to the rise time. So here we have this problem. Now <clears throat> what I'm going to do is inside the 
PID block, you can enable dynamic reset limit. Now this is in essence enabling external reset feedback as explained in other slides. And then the trick is to take the output of the, up, the output channel, pass it through a delay block. This, this block here is this um, this block up here is a delay block and we've estimated the process delay at 10 seconds what I'm trying to show you is if we have mismatch in the estimation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable change this from no compensation to compensation and then I'm going to adjust these to values which are closer to what I would expect if I wanted very tight control just to give you an indication of the improvement that can be achieved through using this method. So first, firstly we're going to enable this. So now there is compensation and that will delay by 10 seconds. And then I'm going to change the reset time to something a lot faster. Let's make it 5 seconds and again take it back because we know the process gain can be quite high we can actually make it for that matter 0.6 which is slightly higher than what we had before if we look at the trend now everything's fine and we do a similar set point change now what you'll see is that this feedback although the input is 55 we've got a 10 second delay time before it comes back into the external reset Pin. and what actually happens is that I'm gonna to have to zoom in now to show you what happens is there's the proportional kick that we had and this is the 10 second effect of the feedback through the external reset So already what you can see is we've reached, we've crossed the rise time has decreased significantly, significantly from minutes to, um, to less than a minute. We still have some oscillation. The only way to address that would be to potentially reduce the gain and increase the, the reset time slightly. So we can take this, take the gain down a little bit. Back to original setting of 0.5 and reset. And just remember, we've estimated the dead time to be 10 seconds. We're slightly out, so we need to be a little bit more conservative. And not perfect. Still, we want to get rid of that oscillation. Let's assume that's all right for now. And let's do another set point change. So I should have made it to 4000. Again, what you're seeing is the initial proportional kick and the external reset feedback prevents the integral effect from happening again a second proportional kick and there you see the velocity of the error suddenly turns so there's the proportional action to correct for it and now we have the system slowly getting back to well, not slowly, it's somewhat faster than before. And um, so we've basically done dead time compensation in a way which is not needed using a Smith predictor. And we've improved the rise time and generally you can improve the tuning quite, uh, quite significantly just by doing this. So this is a typical example of how you would use external reset feedback to improve, uh, well, to 
24 processors got dead time. 